So if you want to do some ribbon embroidery and you haven't got the right colours, don't worry because in this video I'm going to show you how you can colour your own. So I've marked on my design here, I've used a pen that will come off with water so I don't need to worry about if it shows or not and I'm going to do all of the ribbon work in white silk ribbon only so that I can colour it in later on. So we have a ribbon work playlist with all of the ribbon stitches used in this video so I'll link this in the top right corner now and in the description below and I will also note down the names of the ribbon stitches as we get to them so that you can look them up if you wish to. So I'm going to start with three woven ribbon roses and I'm just putting the spokes in for these now. So I'm just using a white cotton for this and I'm coming from the outside of the circle that I've marked on down into the centre and I'm making myself five spokes, so an odd number of spokes so that I can weave the ribbon through these. So I put the three of those in and I've got a stem here that's going to have some buds on the end so I'm going to stitch the stem in in stem stitch and I'm using a green uh, lana thread for this but any green embroidery thread will be fine. And I'm just working my way up the stem now I'm just putting in two little branches for that as I go along. So I've got my stem in and I'm just going to finish off that thread inside this circle. Now this will all get covered with ribbon so I'm just putting two little finishing stitches inside. We won't see these so that's a great place to finish your thread. So just back to the top, snip that off, get rid of my starting knot as well and that's all neat and tidy. So I'm going to use a two millimeter white silk ribbon and I've used it in a chenille needle and you can just see I've put the end of the needle through the end of the thread, pull on the long part and that will just tie it onto the needle. I'll do that again later so don't worry if you didn't see that. I've just started my ribbon off with a knot on the top, little stitch underneath and I'm going to come up right in the centre of this circle next to one of the spokes and all I'm going to do is just weave this ribbon now. So I'm going underneath that spoke over the next one underneath the third one. So just over and under all the way around weaving the ribbon around those spokes. You can use a needle just to guide it and make sure it sits in the right place. So this is what will form the petals of the rose. And what I like to do, this is a little extra tip as well, that if you want to add extra petals on, it's very easy to do, just going to put a straight stitching around the edge now, just single stitches but sort of overlapping previous ones so that they look like petals. So just overlapping that one there, take the needle underneath that petal, just control it as I go down so that it sits on the edge and that makes extra layers of petals and makes them look much more rose-like. So it's quite nice to add a few extra ones on if you want to, you can add as many as you like. You can see I'm just guiding it down carefully so I've got control over where that ribbon sits. We'll just go for another one. I'm using a laying tool here, this is called a Malor, it's a gold work tool but it's great for ribbon embroidery as well. And that just helps me to control my thread and my silk ribbon. So same with this one, over and under that spoke there weaving all the way around, adding in some extra petals as I go, making it a little bit bigger each time. These are going to get bigger as I work up. So now I'm changing my ribbon so to a four millimetre ribbon. So you can see how I threaded that on there so that stays onto the needle and doesn't fall off. So up in the middle, this is a little bit thicker it's exactly the same process. Nice big fluffy ribbon rose this time, so adding those few extra petals on just for some extra depth to it. 
and now I'm going to put a few leaves on. So we're changing stitch now, we're using the 4mm ribbon still. So this is going to be a couple of leaves in ribbon stitch. So hold the ribbon down flat onto the surface and I'm just going through the middle of the ribbon with my needle, guide it down slowly and that forms a leaf. So up where I want the leaf to start, lay it flat to the surface, needle goes through the middle of the ribbon and then when I pull it slowly it makes that beautiful little curl on the end and looks like a leaf. So one more, things look nice in bunches of three. You can just push the ribbon up and give it a little bit of a curl if you want to. Right, so these are the little buds that I mentioned earlier. So this is just a straight stitch and we're going to lay them on top of each other that makes them padded. So a little straight stitch, pull it down flat and another one over the top and you can see how that padding starts to build up and just makes these little rose buds. They're very simple but really effective. Just using the Malore just to control the silk into place. like so and a couple more leaves just to finish off this section of the ribbon work. You can just weave your ribbon under the back to finish it off. Okay so I think um, gold complements ribbon really well and I like my spangles so I'm going to put some of these on now. This is like the gold work embroidery equivalent of sequins. You can put sequins on if you like or you can leave them off if you don't want them on but I do think they add a little bit of extra sparkle to it so I'm going to use some spangles. So this is a four millimeter gilt spangle just threading it onto the needle. I'm just using a, a yellow sewing cotton here just a similar color so it blends in and I'm going to just put three stitches to hold that in place, very simple, up on the outside, down into the middle, just to secure it in place. And I'm going to put two more on, so that's a three millimeter one in the middle, and then this one going on now is a two millimeter one. So this is as small as they go, but they just do add a nice little extra bit of sparkle. So I'm doing all my stitching first because once I get the colours out I don't want to mess up what's already there so I'm going to do the stitching first, get everything down and then do the colouring. So here's the last one on the left hand side. And again just finish your thread on the back. Get rid of the waist knot on the top. Now you can use any wooden shape you like. Um, if you're into crafting and paper crafting um, you'll find lots of this kind of thing around so look in your local craft store or online if you can't get to a shop. Um, and I'm going to use this little bicycle here. Just position it in place. Now there's no right or wrong way of stitching this down but it's got plenty of holes and plenty of places to stitch it so I've used a nice contrasting colour. I'm going to make my roses this colour, so a similar colour anyway, so I'm going to use this nice bright colour and make a feature of the stitching. I'm going to stitch through the spokes of the wheel just to complement the shape of the wood that I'm stitching down. So just doing crossing stitches over the wheel to hold it in place. So hold it down in as many places as possible so it's nice and secure and it's not going to move or come off and then I'm just going to finish my thread kind of underneath that wheel just because it's easier for me to finish on top but you can turn it over 
and thread it under the back if you prefer. So just a couple of stitches and that will secure the end of that thread. So I'm just going to put a couple more stitches in in the ribbon now just to ground the bicycle. So I'm going to use a stitch I used before. So this is the ribbon stitch again. This is the same one I used for the leaves. But just make them a little bit longer now so they look a bit grass-like through the middle of the ribbon. Just pull it slowly so it gets that nice curl on the end of the leaf. So I've just worked away way along. I've done a couple in the middle and a couple on this right-hand side now. One more. And that finishes off all of the ribbon work. So now for the fun bit. So we're going to colour everything in. So these are alcohol markers. These are pro markers by Winsor & Newton. Um, just bought them from Letra Sets and that's why they've got a different name on them. But all you need to know is these are alcohol markers. And you can see that when I just touch the ribbon very lightly with it, you can see how beautifully the colour blends into the ribbon. I'm hardly touching it at all and I'm just letting the ribbon soak in the colour from the pen. Because they're alcohol markers, they soak in very beautifully. You could try other pens, experiment and see what works, but these ones do blend very nicely. You can see how it soaks up the colour and it doesn't blend into the fabric because you barely need to touch the ribbon at all. It does dry lighter than it first appears, so you can put quite a lot on. You can see me going over it now. It dries very quickly, so you can just keep going over it and making it as dark as you want. And the great thing about this now is that you can't do with just using green ribbon. You can actually add a little bit of shading to it. So I've got a darker green here, just a little bit at the bottom and a bit on the leaves, just to give them a bit of extra dimension, which you can't do with just a flat colour ribbon. You can come back in with a light colour and blend, it, blend the two colours in a little bit more. So you can just keep going and keep playing with it until you've got something that you like. So let's do the leaves at the top as well now. So just touching. It will soak into the ribbon and takes these pens beautifully. Coming in with the darker one just to add that little bit of extra dimension down the bottom there. And let's do the buds, this beautiful pink colour. So I'm putting the lightest colour in first. But what's really great about these alcohol markers is that you can actually put light on top of dark, which doesn't seem to make any sense, but it does work because it sort of washes out the other colour. So even though I'm putting the lightest in first, I can come back in later over the dark with it and I'll show you how that works as well. So I'm just putting some highlights in, not worrying too much about where they go. You can play around with it quite a bit. I've got this sort of mid lavendery colour to add a little bit of extra colour and you can see how well it blends. You barely need to, to do anything other than just touch it to the ribbon. It will just soak in without soaking into the fabric as well. You can get really creative with it. You just can't do this with ribbon that's already coloured, so a really fun way of colouring your own. You can see it's dried lighter, so I'm just going to go in again with that colour. Now we can add a really dark purple. Now that looks quite dark, but don't worry, it will dry lighter. And just have a play. It doesn't matter if it goes wrong, you can just bring another colour back in. So I can come back in with the pink, I can go over the top, what I've already done. Just keep playing with it until you've got something that you're happy with. Now it's a bit pink and dark purple at the moment. So here's a medium colour which is lighter and you can see how going over that dark purple sort of washes it out and I get this medium colour coming through. So it's really wonderful that if you've gone too dark it doesn't matter. You can come back in with a lighter colour over the top and blend it. And there is the finished piece.
So I hope you've liked this video and I've shown you something a little bit different and you're excited to get your pens out and have a go. Do click the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications of when we upload something new and do check out our shop for lots of beautiful silk ribbons.